stop laying up. If you're like most golfers, you're probably laying up because you think it's the right strategy. Well, I'm here to tell you today that is typically the wrong move. And we're gonna go through some stats on why laying up is for losers, and it's not gonna actually help you play wicked smart golf. In this video, we're gonna make it super simple to learn should you lay up or should you not. And then when you do have to lay up, we're actually gonna go through a few tips to make the most of it because that's actually a surprisingly hard shot for a lot of golfers. So keep watching so you can learn one of the most important course management strategies is going to help you play wicked smart. So if you look at this golf.com graph where they're working with golf tech, you can actually see that approach shot distance is everything. So it doesn't matter if you're a tour player, 80s, 90s, or a 100 shooter, the closer you are, whether you're 25 versus 50, or 50 versus 100, or 125 versus 150, the closer you are in terms of yards to the green, the closer you're going to hit every single shot. Yes, a 50 yard shot might feel a little bit uncomfortable at times, but as you can see by the data here, it clearly shows no matter what level you are at, you're going to average. Now again, I'm not saying every once in a while you're not gonna hit it closer from 100 versus 50, but on average, you are going to hit it closer. I love in the article it says, there's no range for any skill level where laying up to a favorite number, club, or any other favorite makes mathematical sense if your other option is to send your next shot farther up the fairway, even if it ends up in the light rough. The rub is that most golfers, especially weekend players, overestimate the potential success of hitting a four iron to a preferred layup yardage and underestimate the odds of hitting a three wood into a safe position near the hole. Now the second chart shows the PGA Tour. So as you can tell, the closer you are in proximity, the more likely you are to make the putt. And every foot means a ton. So from four feet, the guys on the PGA Tour are about 90%. They're pretty much automatic. But when you get to eight feet, they're only 50%. And these are the best players in the world with the best equipment, the best coaches, the best everything. And they're only making half of putts from eight feet. Needless to say, when you lay up voluntarily, what you're going to do a lot of times is leave a lot more 10, 15, 20, 30 footers versus five, 10, 15, 20 footers. And every foot counts because once you start getting outside of 15 or 20 feet, a lot of amateur golfers are gonna start three putting as well. So we want to make sure that we are hitting it as close as we can, as often as we can, and hopefully tracking your stats. When you track your stats, you can actually start to see, am I really good at certain distances or do I need to work on certain distances? And when you actually have the stats, you can actually see, wow, I'm a lot better in proximity from 70 or 80 versus 100 or 120. Now, I know a lot of people think that when you have a full swing, it makes it easier. But as the numbers show, it just doesn't add up. I asked Scott Fawcett, the creator of Decade Golf, about this too, because a lot of players still reach out and say, hey, no, I really am better at 70 or 80 than I am at 50 or 60. So what he said is, one, do the stats actually show that? Like, do you actually have proof and not just like in one instance where you were better from 80 than you were at 50? If the stats show that, maybe it's a different story, but again, I just haven't seen it. Unless you have like the chipping yips or some horrible issue from 50 or 60 or whatever troubling distances, it's just typically not the case. And the more important thing that Scott pointed out is that your good or even bad shots from 40 or 60 or whatever distance are gonna be better than your really good shots from 80, 100, or 120. The thing is you have to remember that golf is a game of misses. Your misses are gonna be a lot better from short distances, which means you're gonna have shorter length putts, which again means reducing those three putts and hopefully a few of those putts actually drop. So we need to get it as close as we can, as often as we can, so that way we're not trying to have those long distances into the green. Not to mention, when you do lay up voluntarily too far back, you might actually miss the green. It's actually pretty easy to miss the green from 80, 100, or 120 yards for amateur golfers. Even the pros miss from this distance too. So again, you have to remember to play the averages. Track your stats over time, and you will start to see that laying up is not the wicked smart strategy. But you have to make sure we're practicing it. A lot of golfers do struggle with the three wood, and I do recommend for maybe mid to high handicappers even going up, so it's like a 16, 16 and a half degree. It's gonna be easier to hit this off the deck. But when you know that you can step up and hit this thing off the deck, it will absolutely change your game. As you can see in some of these videos, I've hit some pretty nice three woods over the years. I absolutely love this club, and I'm trying out a mini driver right now, which I'm hitting pretty well off the deck too. 
But one thing that I recommend doing is to make sure your ball position is correct. A lot of times golfers play that ball too far up in your stance because they're trying to lift it. And when you do that, you're gonna hit a lot of thin shots. Now you wanna have this kind of front center, but you don't want it too far back either. But do experiment on the driving range or the simulator, figuring out ball position with your three wood. Other than that, you don't have to do anything different. Just don't try to kill it. Make sure to have a smooth tempo and you're gonna be able to advance this ball as far as you want up there and hopefully lower that scoring average. Finally, make sure you have the right tempo. I find that a lot of golfers try to kill it and that usually doesn't end well. So make sure you have a good smooth tempo. I recommend the Tour Tempo app for every golfer out there so that way you can train your tempo in practice and that way you have a smooth, confident swing on the course. Plus, when you can turn your three wood into a weapon, it's gonna make par fives a lot easier because you're gonna be able to advance it up and hopefully get it up and down for some more birdie. So the only time I'd really suggest laying up is if there's out of bounds up there that really could come into play and hurt your round, or if there's a force carry that you simply can't go over. Especially if it's like a three wood and you have to hit it perfect, amateur golfers typically aren't great from hitting three wood from the deck. So in that instance, it might be time to lay up. However, laying up has its own problems too. I always found that laying up kind of makes it easy to get lazy. So we can't get lazy and we have to laser in on layup shots. I talk about this in my book, Wicked Smart Golf, because it really is important to make sure that you're super committed and not just lackadaisical and lazy on these shots. Because I don't know about you, but I know I've laid up, not really been 100% focused, just kind of pulled a club, didn't really have a target, didn't really have a distance, and then chunked it or hit just this terrible shot. Now all of a sudden my third shot to a par five is gonna be a lot more difficult. Difficult. So make sure we're going through our full routine. That includes analyzing the lie, analyzing how far we have until a penalty area, analyzing what club we need to hit, and maybe sometimes even clubbing up a little bit. I feel like sometimes people lay up too far back, and then again, we go into if you're 120 versus 100 or 80, it's just going to increase your scoring average. So yes, we wanna lay up, never get too close to the water, and then completely you know, abandon the entire point of laying up, but sometimes laying up too far back is also a thing. So make sure we're getting clear about our target, clear about our club, and you have to know your distances. So at the simulator or using a launch monitor on the driving range, make sure you actually know how far you hit every single club. Ultimately, laying up should be strategic and not the automatic choice. In general, send it. Make sure you're hitting those hybrids and fairway woods as close to the green as possible so you can lower your scoring average and start playing to your potential. But if there's out of bounds up there or a force carry that you just can't make, then of course you wanna lay up. But follow the tips in this video so you don't get lazy and you make the most of that layup. If you want even more tips to play more consistent golf, watch these two videos next.